now we're gonna have a great time doing it. So we're gonna wait for gauge. I got it where I wanted at 35 psi. Now this may be a little higher. Than Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Defiant Jeep. Today we got a little project going on uh, with Defiant uh, himself. Uh, so as you can notice, uh, just like most accessories that everyone has, there's lights. Everybody's got lights, we love lights because we want to be able to go everywhere, do as many things as we can, even in the dark. So of course Defiant actually has a light bar on the uh, bumper guard. I got uh, two pod lights on the A-pillar and then I got a 52 inch light bar on top. And today's job is going to be super, super simple. All we're going to do is replace some switches. Now, for quite a few years now, I've been using uh, these Daystar switches. Uh, Daystars are nice. They're, they're, the texture blends with the rest of the interior and the dash. But uh, they're limited to colors. You have your red, blue, uh, green, and yellow. And there's no other upgrades that I'm aware of. Uh, and I've already gotten these uh, switches installed. In fact, with the Daystar uh, switch mount, that I, re uh, I replaced at the lower end of my uh, dash cluster or dashboard where there used to be a net or a kind of cargo net for storage. So that's been on there for a few years, but I've decided, let me just switch up my switches. I'm kind of, no pun intended. Let me change my switches. There's something with a little bit more design, something a little bit more, this is really what I am. Instead of just having a light, having to remember where it's at, uh, something a little bit more illuminated that tells me what that switch does and with a cool little graphic. So what I've decided to do uh, from Nylite, I decided to pick up these switches. Now I actually have four of them, uh, full disclosure. One's already installed. I wanted to make sure I was able to do it and get it done right and make it look clean uh, before I make this video. Uh, and of course I, uh, I'm gonna do what I can to show you how I did that process um, so we can get them installed. But uh, the one that's already installed is the one for the light bar on the push bar of the bumper. What I have here, is one for rear lights which are not installed yet we're probably more, more than likely not doing that one today so we're going to hang on to that switch for a little while but i do have a switch for my light pods and i do have a switch for my roof light bar and of course the one that's already installed um <laughs> it's already installed and it's, it's good to go it already works i tested it and all the tools that i needed today was a trim panel tool so i can remove the panel and get to the wiring and a regular test light. You don't need anything expensive. You can just go to a local parts house and get one from a brand called Lyle or whatever else they carry. A regular little test light all you need. Just clamp this to any ground. And a good ground would be any bolt um, in the interior. And that's what I used. I used the bolt that I, that I knew was securing something else. So I knew it was a perfect ground. I used that. I just jammed this into the female of the spade connector. And the one that lit up, I knew that was my power. And speaking of that, uh, I did follow a diagram. Now, most diagrams are gonna have a red, a white, and a black wire. Uh, the particular harness that I am using is, uh, shucks, I forgot that brand. I'll get it to you, but it's, it's the Harbor Freight brand. And it comes with, uh, it, it's a nice wiring harness. It's, it's really just kind of a plug and play where you just install it and that's it. It comes with a fuse, it comes with a relay, uh, it comes with adequate amount of wire um, but the difference is, uh, and they have a nice little rocker switch it comes with, but instead of having a red, a white, and a black wire, it has a blue, a white, and a black wire. So of course the black we know is ground. The white is gonna be the accessories, and the blue is your power cable. And of course, following the diagram like the one I'm showing right here, I, uh, I also went and decided to go ahead and test it to make sure it was 100% correct. So I found my ground, I clamped my test light to it, I tested all of the leads again, and it is correct that the blue is the one with the power. So we routed that following 
the same diagram as to plug it into uh, the spades of the of the switches. And talking about the spades, every switch. Let me see, show you how I got this wired here. I know it's a little weird to see, but you got um, you got you got three spade connectors on this side, two on here. So it's pretty much the ground is on top, and it's going to daisy chain to the other uh, black on top. The one in your center is supposed to be for your power in, and you're going to daisy chain down diagonally. Oops, diagonally down to this one here. And what that's going to do, that's going to power the light. You have actually two LEDs in here. You got this LED right here. The lights are blue for the title. And then when you turn on the switch, uh, the picture itself lights up, letting you know that this is operating right now. Um, let me see what's going on there. Oh, we're good. So, um, and of course, and then you have this accessories out going back to, um, I guess the controller or the light itself. So when it's on, uh, the power is going to come from here down to here and then out through here. I am horrible at holding these things. My God, I'm so sorry. Okay, so let's do this one more time. Uh, I got it grounded. Got a power coming in right here. It's Daisy Team down right here for the light. When you turn it on, this lower light's going to turn off and the top one's going to turn on. And when that top one turns on, power is going to run from the lower lead going to the light itself to actually light what uh, the the, the build by if we want it and in this case it would be that light bar which i've already tested um so alrighty let's go ahead and jump in the passenger compartment and i am going to show you how i got this done alrighty so right here in the passenger compartment you can see that i have the daystar light switches installed in another switch right here which is a cool little neat item uh which shows the uh i guess the my battery volts this would be a voltmeter of some sort uh, and of course, it's got two USB ports uh, that are protected by this cover. And we're not necessarily going to wire that one in today. That one is uh, a project for another time because I got to figure out how to run the wires from the back of this thing, which is two, just a positive and negative. But I want to tie them into something like, let's say the wire leads for the cigarette lighter. This way I can get it as accurate as I can without having something directly connected to the battery. But you can also see right here that the one for the front light bar is already connected or is already installed so all I gotta do is just pop out these two which I'm gonna use today this one here is gonna be for the uh, the pod lights the bottom of the a pillar this one right here is gonna be for the 52 inch light bar that's running across the, the roof this one right here I'm gonna say that is gonna be the one for the rear lights that I haven't uh, decided to wire just yet I, I still have to measure where I'm gonna put them I'm gonna I got a pair of four inch light pods that I'm gonna actually mount on my rear bumper. And those would be good for backup purposes, not necessarily backup lights, but um, something that help me light up the night when I go off uh, in the field somewhere camping and I need a backup and I just don't have any light, I, I can use those as, as uh, just rear lights. But let's go ahead and start installing these new switches. Alrighty, um, with me being in position where I need to be, the only thing we need to get away is the, the shifter itself. It's still in the park position. I'm going to go ahead and move it to drive just to get the shifter out of the way. Now, my transfer case has already been shifted back just to give me plenty of space right here. Now, on a normal basis, you'd be wanting to remove this entire panel. But in this case, since uh, what I'm working today and how I was able to change out this first switch, I just uh, peeled it out and uh, pulled on the wires. And the wires are directly connected to the switch. So that's all the space I needed. Um, I'm gonna have ample cable using this extra. It's, it's from these uh, daisy chains that were provided um, when I bought the switches. They actually came with it. I didn't have to make these daisy chains. So these are a different plus right here. So let's go ahead and where is my, I know I had it in here. There you go. Got my little pry tool. Let's just put, let me climb in. I'm gonna open the switch and put my shifter in drive. Okay, you know, you know that beeping finish here. Now, just like any any other aftermarket something or whatever appliance, oops, oh, hey, that popped out all the way. That's okay, that's oh, quite okay. Let's get the switch out of here. Now this is gonna be tight and please be patient with it. Let's see if I can 
We got it out of there. There. Oh, I just popped the cover off, and that's, that's still okay. It's just a cover. It'll snap back on. Okay. So just for argument's sake, we're gonna leave. This is the one for the upper light bar, the one on the roof. We're gonna leave that one alone for right now. We're gonna work on the second one, which I know is to um, my lead for the, the light pods. It's only got two wires connected. It looks like when this was done some years ago, it was wired incorrectly because all I have is the blue and the white connected. The ground is not connected, but for some reason the lights still work. I'm not an electrician, I'm not a mechanic, I don't know any of that good stuff here. So, I'm not gonna claim to know exactly how that works. Uh, oh, that's a super simple switch, oh my God. That's it, oh look at that, it's back together. Oh yeah, I'll throw it over there, pick it up in a minute. Okay, so now, uh, don't get out of there buddy. You're gonna put them back to the panel. Now we're gonna grab our switch, and this is for the light pods. Right on. Okay, so we're gonna put the blue on the bottom. That's how it works for the other one. We're gonna take our white, put them in the center, and then our black is our ground. Okay, so you can see that it is illuminated here. It's very, very hard to see, but the light blue is showing. And of course, because it's daylight right now, you can't, can't even see it. And I'm sure that it's still lit because my ignition switch is open. I can't close it right now because of the shifter being in drive. But as soon as I hit it on, the, uh, the little etched emblem for the pod lights, they light up as well. Let's turn that off. And let me grab that. Let's go outside, let's take a look at the lights, make sure that they work. Alrighty, let's take a look at the pod lights. Now these are not your regular squares, these are the six and a half inch. I can leave a link for these in the uh, description below. Uh, just like the uh, the panel that I'm using on my JK, I can leave a description for that in the, uh, I'm sorry, a link for that uh, in the description below as well. But the, uh, the lights themselves are not lit, and that's okay. I'm gonna go back over here. We are going to, what are you, right here, nope, that's not it, that's it, let's hit that switch, and now the lights are on, that's wonderful, alrighty, so we know it works, alright, let's grab our switch, let's turn it off, well now, now that we know that the wiring works, and the switch works, and so of course the light, Let's go ahead and finish the last one, and well, we're almost finished. All right, for right now, the last switch is uh, installed and connected. Let's just make sure that the uh, light switch is working. All righty, let's take a look at that light bar. Okay, light part is there. It is off. We're going to hit that switch. That's going to be this thing right here. Yeah, roof light bar. Let's go ahead and turn it on. And the light bar is lit right on. Let's go back and turn it off. Alrighty, with uh, the confirmation that the wiring and the switches work, of course the lights work. All we gotta do is just button it up, put it back together, and we are about done.
Oh my goodness, man, that thing put up a little bit of a fight, but I think I got it. I mean, it's in. The panel needs to be adjusted a little bit. Maybe we reroute some wires, but uh, you know, to make it a, a little bit more flush fit, because I think everything's just bunching up right behind there. So I have to like pull some stuff back from from way behind it to make everything fit better. Uh, but let's take a look at the end result so far. Alrighty, with the shifter back in park and my transfer case back in two-wheel drive. Now the switches are completely available right here, uh, except for this red one, which we're saving for a later date. And of course, this um, voltmeter we're gonna save for a later date. Uh, but these switches are freely accessible. When this is in two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, the switches are available. When this is in park, of course, when you're uh, out in the field or doing whatever, uh, in or even in, in drive, whatever, uh, the switches are still freely available. And so they are gonna light up right here, or they are lit up right there at the bottom. And when the switches are turned on, the edge symbol turns on. It's actually pretty neat. Alrighty, with the switches installed, we are pretty much good to go. Now, uh, another little bit of full disclosure. Uh, during in between these two scenes right here, I did go back and I fixed my dashboard. It was really bothering me how it didn't fit flush the way it's supposed to. And of course, me showing you all of my work, I don't want this to be some kind of representation of the way I work. So I went back there and I pulled all the wires. I got everything flushed. Everything's fitting perfect now. Now, uh, the only thing I want to show you uh, later on when it gets dark is the switch is actually in action. I want, I want to show you how they light up because it's so difficult to see it during the day. But while I got you right now, let me talk about uh, that one part where you saw me trying to put all the switches back into the pod itself, the little panel. And I had to get a file. In fact, where is this one right here? A small little flat file. What had happened is that these Daystar switches you know, are of a certain thickness. And for the most part, they're all the same, but they can be off a little bit. And these night lights that I just bought, they are off a little bit. So what I did is because the uh, switch panel itself is plastic with a little file, I just filed it as minimal as possible just to, to, to make the uh, the other switch fit. And it worked out perfect. So uh, let me see. Tools we used was a plastic trim tool, which I have it in the Jeep, I'm sure I forgot it. I used a test light to make sure which one's my power. Um, and a file to, to retrim some of the edging for the hole for the switch. And it was just that easy. Uh, the, the rest of the wiring was already there uh, because of the switches, because those lights already exist on Defiant. So we're gonna hang out for a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna wait for the sun to go down and I'm gonna show you the end result of these switches installed. All right, all right. The sun has gone down a little bit. We, we are dusky enough where we can take a look at the, uh, the lights on this uh, dash panel here for the switches. Let's go ahead and take a look. Alrighty, so right here, I don't know why that flash turned on, but uh, right here you can see that the, uh, the the label of the switch is, is lit uh, and the lights are not turned on because the emblem is not lit. As you can see, look at uh, my driveway right there. There is no lights. Let's go ahead and turn on this top switch right here and that turned blue and that is blue. Alrighty, let's go ahead and turn that one off. Let's go to do my pod lights. It's going to be quick because I got neighbors. That lights are blue. Pod lights are turned on. All righty. Go ahead and turn that one off. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this one here. That one did not light up, which is going to be a problem for me. And it looks like it turned off. Let's take a look again. Yeah, versus these, it stayed on. Let's turn this one on. And you can see that that's lit. So with all the wiring done these two are working these are not i'm gonna have to warranty the switch but overall the uh, it definitely works i only have one other issue with this situation right here i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna turn my jeep off now it is totally turned off there we go but those lights are still on now if anybody knows a fix for this uh because i followed the diagram exactly the way it was sent to me uh from uh, the wiring harness and uh, from Nylight where I got the switches from and I followed uh, the diagrams are identical. So if anybody knows a fixture on this so these lights don't stay on even when the Jeep is turned off, just drop me a comment below. Alrighty, with the switches installed, uh, everything seems to be working fine. Uh, like, like I showed you on that one switch, I'm going to have to warranty that one switch to find out what's going on with that. Uh, but all in all, I'm still happy with the end result. I got that one more switch to install uh, for the uh, rear bumper lights, but I'll install that switch when I get the rear bumper lights installed and uh, I'll definitely show you a clip on that. Um, shoot, I, I, I think that's really about it. It was definitely an easy job. Um, 
the, the, my only still one concern is that the label lights stay on even when the ignition is turned off. So I'm, it's gonna be a little tiny battery draw. To, to me right now, it's not a big deal. I got two batteries in Defiant. But if there's a way to manage that where those lights are off when I turn the ignition off, yeah, if somebody would leave me a comment, maybe show me something new, uh, I'm, I'm happy to receive any criticism. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to all our social platforms. Uh, visit us at www.defiantjeep.com where you can find all of your Jeep performance accessories, camping uh, gear, and other merch. And of course, join us at www.desertwranglers.club. We'd love to see you on the trail.